Help support Friendo Club by going to patreon.com slash Stephen Larson or clicking join at youtube.com slash Stephen Larson. Access to bonus episodes, question threads for the Going In Raw podcast, and entry to our monthly wrestling predictions challenges. Join the Friendo Club today. Hey, Friendo, Steve here. Hello. And welcome back to Going In Raw on today's episode. The Rock says... Dave Meltzer, those other guys, got it wrong. Also, we'll be talking about this past Friday SmackDown, where it seemed like Roman Reigns and Cody Rhodes was taking a nap, and then they did a big in-ring segment. <laughs> but you know what, Larson? It seems like it seems like we're officially now. I was talking to Maggie about this over the weekend. Ugh. It seems like we're probably now, as it pertains to the main event situation for night one and night two. I think we're just sort of on advertise mode right now, right? Pretty much. It's, it's like, hey, everybody, WrestleMania is coming up, you know? <laughs> right. Let's remind you guys what the various matches are. But it did seem like they might have set up another match. We're going to talk about that as well. And we're going to talk about the big tag team tournament, how, like, SmackDown has to go through. No, wait. What is it? Like, it's Raw qualifiers has... on Raw. There's a mini tournament on SmackDown. But That's you right. don't win the tournament to advance. You got to be the last two of tournament to advance right. the WrestleMania. Is it's that strange. how it is? I, I thought, like, yeah. the last. Okay. Okay. Yes, you're right. Yeah, you're right. Because the one team is. Okay. All right. So then we yeah. get, we get uh, what, Street Profits against Waller and, and, and Theory. And Theory. And then, and then it's uh, versus... New Catch Republic versus. Uh, uh, Legato, Legato think, right? Yeah, for the other spot. Yeah, yeah. so we're going to talk about getting ahead of ourselves here. Let's talk about this. One, this is like one of my favorite stories of the last week. I think it's funny. <laughs> it is, and funny. now especially that The Rock has kind of responded to it. It's funnier yet. So last week we talked about a report from Melser that WWE talent were upset about the parent double standard when it came to The Rock being able to cuss social media promos, in ring promos, while they were advised to keep things PG. Despite the fact that Cody and Jey Uso and Pat McAfee all cussed on Raw last week. Yeah. So The Rock ended up responding to WrestleMania's aggregation of the Observer's report. This is what the WrestleMania tweet says. Quote, TKO would like The Rock to follow and set a good example. It's guidelines of a TG PG product. However, many feel the double standards of Vince McMahon error are back. The final boss, The Rock, responded to that tweet saying, this story is complete or shit. Oh, wow. <laughs> so then. Well, hold on a second. Here, here, there, there's something here, though, that WrestleMania got wrong. Okay. Nothing in the report, Meltzer's report, you know, I'll defend Dave here in this sense, because at no point in Dave's reporting did he say that TKO told The Rock to do anything. It was a lot of wrestlers are complaining. About The Rock having the, the, the latitude to cuss, whereas they don't. Mm -hmm. It was TKO that wanted everybody else to follow yeah. the guidelines. The Rock seemingly exempt from guidelines, and it was not TKO hoping The Rock would set the good example. It was the locker room. Right, right. So they said, everybody but The Rock, uh, y'all need to stay clean, but we're not going to tell the director of the board what to do. He owns it all. He owns, he owns, it owns all. everything pertaining yeah. to The Rock. That means he's yeah. the boss. So anyways, Melser later responded to a couple tweets uh, on Twitter saying the following, quote, first of all, I never said TKO wanted him to change anything. I wrote that because he's the rock. He can do what he wants. He always catered to people of that level, whether in wrestling or other endeavors. Somehow that was changed in translation to something me or the other reporter who had the basic same story both never said. I'm sure he wouldn't like what some talent said for the story, but other talent had said, have said similar elsewhere. That said, we've also constantly pointed out his value at the box office and for company perception in ways a lot of people didn't don't consider such as him being there engages a lot of heavy hitters who wouldn't engage in WB business otherwise, and as to greatly help in making deals and sponsorships. A lot of people don't get this aspect of business, and you can't overstate his value, which is why he got a $30 million deal. Ooh, those other guys. So if The Rock was merely commenting on WrestleMania's aggregation, that's correct. They got it wrong. Mm. Yeah, but the story but he says this if, story. If the yeah. story overall is what the yeah. Ross commenting on, we said from the beginning, this sounds like a work. Yeah, yeah, or to it, a degree, a work. So it's one of two things: either, and WWE has been doing. Look, w, and we've 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 I've I've noticed this in our comments, pointing out correct, uh, correctfully, rightfully, that correctly. 
<laughs> Monday, man. Actually, it's Monday, baby. I did not sleep a wink on Saturday night. Uh, correctly, that WWE has been known throughout the decades to try to work the sheets a little bit. However, it's not like everything that's reported in the Wrestling Observer and other uh, wrestling journalist outlets, journalism outlets, uh, are like nothing but like misinformation, disinformation. Dave Meltzer's got plenty of stuff, correct? That has come, that is like, you know, been verified yeah. with the way things have played out in the past. Lately, it's been a little bit different. When yeah. you hear things like, upon the return of CM Punk, Seth Rollins, who pitched a fit after cameras went off, then goes backstage and continues to pitch a fit, even though we all know he was told beforehand that CM Punk was coming back. It seemed like Seth Rollins was simply acting out for anybody who might be backstage with Mr. Sean Ross Sapp on the phone or Mr. Dave Meltzer, you know, uh, uh, in his DMs. Um, so they have been going through extra sort of lengths, it seems, to put info out there. There was Justin Barrasso, who came out and straight up said people in WWE with the uh, with the CM Punk Seth Rollins. Uh, it was Cody the idea Rose, that Gunther Cody could Rose. win the Mania stuff or, or win the Rumble stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Said uh, Cody Rhodes is not going to finish the story of WrestleMania that he then retracted, said that WWE was putting that out there to try to get it you know, publicized through him, through his, his outlet. Yeah. So it does seem like there is more of a concerted effort in the recent, very recent uh, history um, to, to do this, whether it's that, which is possible, or WWE's got a lot of people on their roster, a lot of people on their roster. If a couple people are out there and they happen to say, man, lol, why does this guy uh, get the freaking curse and we don't? What a double standard. Then, you know, if that makes its way to Dave Meltzer and reports on it, he's not being, you know, untruthful worked. about it. Yeah. He's not being worked with it. That being said, it's not, it, 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 if it's one person's feeling, it's not necessarily something that's commonplace throughout the locker room, you know. Everybody in the locker room is their own, pe their own person. They're going to exactly. have their own takes on things. Exactly. And maybe there are people there who I wouldn't shock me at all if people there are like, hey, why can't I say fuck when The Rock says fuck? You know, and I'm going yeah, to say, but, well, know, they I'm sorry. they got to understand that, sir. It's right or wrong, it's The Rock, you know. You're not the director of the board. You, you don't do own the, the, the Rock IP. You don't run everything. I will say, because we've said that's silly, uh, people who would compare this particular situation with anything Vince McMahon double standard related is ridiculous. Yes. Because the two I don't think can really be compared. But I do no. appreciate that The Rock said, this is horseshit and off is the direction in which whoever is at fault here can fuck. There we go. Good punctuation. Let's move on to SmackDown, Steve. Absolutely. <sighs> Oh, I was expecting some fireworks. Didn't expect those fireworks to come from a fan in the front row, but that's no. where we got them. Not really from Roman uh, or, or, or Cody. Or Cody, Rose. for that matter. Yeah, yeah, it was it was an atypically sleepy promo from both of them. I, I, I mean, the basic idea in the 20-minute segment was Roman trying to uh, cast some doubt in Cody's mind whether he can trust Seth Rollins and Cody doing the same to Roman as it, when it comes to The Rock. Mm -hmm, yeah, but it wasn't like either of them necessarily felt like it was. Oh, that man, that's a, that's a, that's a that's a good jab, you know. It wasn't like at most the Rock was like, or sorry, Roman was all, but he always looks like uncomfortable. You know what I mean? Roman even said, "You tried this before with the Rock. Yeah. You've tried this already. Like yeah. get something new." Yeah. Um, I was so look. I mean, if if it accomplished anything. It was, uh, you know, it allowed Roman for at least one week it to get time the, <laughs> accomplish that <laughs> to, to, to get the hell out of the shadow of the rock. Rock didn't drop one of his social media promos. No. Um, and so it allowed us to sort of refocus on what the actual main event's going to be. But maybe this is the segment is why they had so much focus on the rock. <laughs> you know, the, you know, it just it. Yeah, maybe, you know, without the twists and turns are done. They're not, they're, they're not going to refocus. I, I do kind of wonder if, because what do we have left? We've got this week's episode 
of SmackDown and then yeah. one go home, I think, right? Aren't there two more SmackDowns? There is because it's on the sixth and the seventh. This yeah. coming one is going to be what on the thirtieth. Trying to pop up. So yeah, there's here. Yeah, there's there's a go home on the fifth. Would it be? Yeah. yeah so there's the twenty ninth and the fifth. Yeah, there's two left. Yeah. So and then the Rock's going to be on the Raw on the first, I believe. I think isn't he on? Is he on Raw tonight or just the first? I thought it was just the go home. Punk's back Raw. tonight. Okay, Punk yeah, you're is right. back Punk's back tonight. tonight. Um. So uh. So yeah, it seems like maybe. We're going to get a couple more promos, like maybe two more Roman promos, or at least uh, something tells me the, the, the go home episode is just going to be a big old giant video package. Hopefully Probably. with a cool song that they've licensed. No, no, no physicality, no brawling. Cause that's the, again, last year with Cody and Roman, they didn't do any, there was no like advanced in WrestleMania brawl. There's no physicality between them really. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if the same this year. Yeah, I, I honestly think at this point it's just sort of like, okay, we're gonna we're gonna remind people this is what's happening at WrestleMania. No more twists, no more turns. Um it was, you know, it was a bit of a choice. <laughs> you know, Roman did the thing where he well Pat and Solo yeah. and uh, and Jimmy are there. And then Cody had his own Wapa where his henchmen, his bodyguards, uh Jay Uso and the world heavyweight champion I know. Seth Rollins. I know. We're we're seconding him, um, which is kind of funny that Seth Rollins gets relegated to that. But again, it's sort of I guess that sort of feeds into the push and pull with him and Drew McIntyre, um, who himself is seemingly uh, distracted by CM Punk. He went to Mindy's Bakery uh, yeah. today uh, on social media, I, and I have no doubt that he's going to come in contact or him and Punk will have a thing tonight with Punk. Oh, you'd back imagine, in Chicago. yeah. That should be really good. But, uh, but yeah, I feel like the rest of SmackDown had kind of a lot of meat to it, and this and that segment didn't, you know. No. I, they're no. just sort of like, hey, this is what's going on. This is our night two main event right here. And, uh, you know, Cody you forgot. Just, <laughs> yeah, in case you forgot, because The Rock's been around, and it's easy to forget these things. Uh, Cody said, I'm the one. Didn't really give me any more, you know, uh, clue as to whether or not they're actually going to do this thing with Cody. I still feel like they're going to do the thing with Cody because why wouldn't you? But there wasn't like a big like, oh, Roman and the bloodline have got the upper hand on Cody. It was just Cody's matching Roman now. But yeah. there's two more weeks where maybe Roman can get, you know, the bloodline can get the upper hand mm -hmm. on Cody Rhodes and really, you know, his last little burst of adversity before he rolls into WrestleMania and then takes the L night one and has to has to do the bloodline dub night, two. night two. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, seems like it. Yep. Uh, uh, one let's of the talk things. About... Sorry. Yeah, I was gonna say one of the things teased potentially for Mania is you know I thought it was gonna be uh, Santos Escobar taking on Rey Mysterio at WrestleMania, and it seems like they kind of got that out of the way on Friday with Santos getting the win, but it was with the help of one Dominic Mysterio who showed up ringside with the Rey Mysterio mask, cost Rey the match. If they're gonna have this rematch, how are they gonna up the ante? Are they gonna do hair versus mask this time around? I think part of that tease was Dom wearing that mask. Yep. You know, I think he's been growing that Eddie Guerrero mullet out, you know, uh, uh, pretty long. Pretty much since he joined Judgment Day. Yeah. And uh, I think if you're going to do this, you're going to do hair versus mask. And uh, and Ray's going to – because did, did Dom won – didn't did Dom win the first one? No, no Ray won the Ray first won one? last year at Media. Okay. Well, Ray's not getting rid of his mask. <laughs> so yep. not until, you know, year three maybe. Because he's probably got, I know he has said recently that he's got another couple of years in him, which is insane given how he can still move and how old he is. Uh, but yeah, I could see, I could see Ray getting the win on Dom's mullet. Unless, is there any possibility? Look, it's it's a tradition in the lucha world. You lose your mask, you reveal who you are, and then you go and kind of a uh, goodbye to her. At least we've seen that in the past. It's possible. Is it is it possible that Rey Mysterio loses his mask at WrestleMania? What do you give the odds of that happening? I'd be pretty surprised. I'd be pretty surprised if he lost his mask. Me too. You know, because he already lost it in WCW. Mm, that's non-canon. That didn't. But I'm saying when he came yeah. back, when he came to WWE, he had the mask back on. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, me. yeah, yeah. And it, I don't know. It's one of those things where. <laughs> Boy, what a disaster that was in WCW. Yeah, you got that right. Um, yeah, I'd just be really surprised, but you know, it, it, especially if it was clear that his, his contract was running out, he was winding down his career. He wanted to give his son that kind of honor, that, that rub of winning his mask off him. 
I think it's much more likely, but I think he's got more time on his deal. Uh, yeah, I don't know how much more. I think he's got, or did he like resign recently? I for like so, two yeah. more? I think he might have resigned for two years. That's what I want to say. Yeah. But then my brain, you know, doesn't work right all the time. Same here. Uh, in any event, yeah, having Ray win the first one, if they do a trilogy, like let's say they, you know, he does stick around, they do a trilogy. Let me ask you this. Hmm. Let's say Ray has, let's say he's got those two years. And let's say, I don't know, just for the sake of whatever, Mania 41, let's say that's his retirement match. Is it possible that they do hair versus mask, Dom loses this one? I'm trying to think, is there any chance that we get a reunion between the two? Like, uh, uh, you know, they, 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 they make good. And then, you know, they reform a tag team in the future before Ray retires. Or do you think Dom's going to be the guy to retire Ray? I mean, here's another option they could do for Mania. If they don't want to do a singles match, you could do Dom and JD against Ray and Andrade. Oh, this year? Yeah. They could do Dom and Santos. Yeah. Or Dom yeah. Santos, yeah. Because Santos, you know, I think they, they like Santos. He just got the win over Ray. Yeah. And uh and yeah, that's that's a that's that's a possibility right there. Ray and who? Uh, Andrade. Oh, and Andrade. Oh yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah, because of the yeah. Ooh, ooh. Boy. And then push on the hair versus mask thing till next year if they want to do You could that. do that next year. Who would take yeah. the L? Um yeah. Yeah, I mean, who, Santos would probably eat the pin at that in that match because mm. he just beat Ray. So yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. You think Santos point. would lose? Yeah, yeah, that could be. Ooh, that'd be nice. That'd be a nice match right there, man. Yeah, Boy, that'd be a nice match. That'd be good stuff. Or you uh, could do you could do Dom and Legato. So eight man tag against Ray, Andrade, and then Wild and Del Toro. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you could do that. Yeah. Yeah, since those dudes are not going to be in the tag match. We'll talk about mm -hmm. that here in a second. Real quick, shout out to a couple new uh, channel members getting the Friendo Club set up. Saul Nolasco signed up to become a channel member via the Thank Friendo you, Club setup. Gets access to the bonus episodes, question threads. And then our dude, Mr. Dope, gifted a membership to the community to Thank Heather you, Wright. Dope. Thank you, Dope. Armad here. Thank you, Mr. Dope. Appreciate that. Thank you, that. Mr. Dope. Thank you so Patrick much. Patrick Cheeseman has been a member for 10 months now. Says, in honor of 10 months, let's have 10 seconds of applause for all the friendos out there. One, two, three, fours of 10. Okay, thank you. 10. 10. Uh, also, High Plains Drifter. A member now for two years. Says, just getting the video up as I'm late. Did I miss the pro rock Slurpee segment? Yeah, that was our opener. <laughs> Love the rock. Love the rock. Yeah. Uh, Nightfall's been a member of 20 for 28 months now. How is that possible? You've been doing this that long. Says Rhea Ripley keeps her title at Mania, right? Oh, yeah. Big oh, yeah. confidence on that. Larson, what do you think oh, yeah. of Rhea Ripley on the house show circuit? It looks uh, like everybody's having tons of fun. Getting cheeky. <laughs> everybody's having tons of fun. And then and did you see, I saw a clip I I think it was from last night, not the same night as as the Stink Face, where uh, Naya's ringside, yeah, and 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 like against the barricade, she looks up and she's like telling someone to feed her some popcorn or something while she's selling. Oh, I didn't funny. see that. It was pretty funny, yeah. So uh, Rhea Ripley gave Nia Jax the Rikishi Stink Face, yeah, uh, and it was you know she did the whole thing where she wedgies herself <laughs> and she does yeah. a little booty shake. Rhea Ripley is an absolute joy, and that women's division seems like they're having a ton of fun right now. Well, the next night, last yeah. night, yeah, she has a match with Shayna Baszler, and at yeah. the beginning of the match, it looks like Shayna's like, "All right, come on, give me the, give me, the, give me the." She's like, face. "Come on, please, give me," the, you know, yeah. e echoing everybody who's got the Rhea crush in the crowd, right? Yeah, she's yeah. like, "Come on, give me the stink face," <laughs> and then Nia takes her out, and mm -hmm. Shayna thinks she's still gonna get it from from Rhea Ripley, so she has her eyes closed, waiting to get it. Naya gives it to her. Shane is like, oh, I did it. I did it. And then looks and sees who she got it from. And she starts, Ugh. <laughs> That was awesome. That was absolutely awesome. And then I saw CM Punk on his story 
uh, yeah. today said, hey, Ree, I've seen what you've been doing. I'm going to one up you. And it's a shot of him and Cody like face to face. But somebody had photoshopped them. Like kissing. they're about to kiss. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. That was funny. It's pretty funny. It was That's pretty good funny. stuff. Seems like everybody's having a good time. It does. Everybody's having a good time. Um, another development looks like uh, Bianca's getting herself involved in this Bailey damage control Naomi situation. I love I love this stuff. I really do. I think, man, the whole thread of Naomi understanding what it's like to have a faction turn on you, wanting for that reason to and not being around for the 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 inception yep. of damage control. Yep. Saying, no, I'm gonna come get her back, Bianca. I, I get that you're you're telling me all this stuff, but I'm gonna stick to my principles, okay? You you do you. So she goes out there, tries to make the save, and Bianca's been trying to tell her, look, man, we're buddies. But you're going down the wrong path. So Naomi tries to help out. Um, ends up getting the mist from Oscar. That brings out Bianca, and uh, and coincidentally or not, same episode, Jade Cargill announced that she is SmackDown. Uh, she's signing with SmackDown as opposed to Raw. Um, you know, again, I'm not entirely sure which way they're going to go. If it's going to be just a tag match with Naomi and Bianca. Or if they're going to bring Jade into it, did you get any more of a feel for that this week? Not necessarily. I mean, there was that one segment backstage where Damage Control was walking around and Jade kind of stepped up to him. Yeah. Um, and whether they're going to continue down that path starting next week when she makes her official SmackDown debut as SmackDown Superstar. Or if they're going to go a different direction with her. Because we saw even backstage where Naomi and, and, and or Bianca was helping Naomi out after she got misted in the eye. And Tiffany Stratton walks up. And they mm. seemed like that was the direction they were heading with Bianca. Yeah. You know, prior to her getting involved in this damage control stuff. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it, anybody's guess at this point. Who knows if they're going to do Tiffany and Bianca and then have Jade help Naomi mm. against damage control. Whether it's going to be a six-woman tag. And Tiffany's doing something else. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. The the, the pieces could go um, either way. Real quick yeah. here. Mentioned earlier uh, all the new friendos and re, uh, re-upping friendos for the Friendo Club setup. We actually do have two ways to get the Friendo Club setup. Uh, you can also go not – you can you can either click join here on the YouTube, youtube.com slash Stephen Larson, or you can go to patreon.com slash Stephen Larson and uh, opt for the Friendo Club setup there. It's $5 a month either way. And you get access to our bonus episodes. We dropped a new Friendo cast. Uh, uh, I actually got it up early for once. I got it up yeah. on Friday, the day after we recorded it. Uh, so new Friendo cast every single week. Those are episodes where we talk about anything but wrestling. No wrestling talk. No wrestling talk. For some reason lately, we've been talking a lot about Pearl Jam albums uh, <laughs> that may or may not suck. <laughs> It has um, at least once an episode. It, it definitely since we, we did the grunge conversation, that has been a topic of conversation. It has been a topic. Of, yeah, and I've mentioned again on Wrestle Juice, and somebody's like, "Nah, man, peak Pearl Jam is a riot act." I'm like, "The fuck?" <laughs> you know, hey, maybe as a thing, like you know, it, there's a lot of people who grew up watching the Star Wars prequels, and for them, that's prime Star Wars. Those yeah, of us right. who grew up watching the original trilogy look down upon the prequels, big time. But for people who grew up with those movies, that's prime Star Wars for them. It, it could is, be the yeah. same way with Pearl Jam, where people who started listening to Pearl Jam and the Riot Act and After Era, that's prime Pearl Jam for them. When they look at they look at verses or ten, they're like, Pff. Pff. could you imagine being like 13, 14, 15 when Riot Act comes out and being like, oh man, this is the new shit. This is the good stuff right here. <laughs> Yeah, I guess I guess I guess that's possible. How do you remember that anything on that album getting radio play, bro? Neither do I. Neither at that, that point. At that point, they had aged themselves out of radio play. Uh uh. Anyways, while you look that up, uh, so yeah, you also get access to the question threads and the big blue predictions challenge coming up at the WrestleMania. Man, this is gonna be a big one. Muted Mayday is our current champion, and once. I get the new hat in. I'm going to go ahead and send this to Muted Mayday. It's the Big Blue Predictions Champion hat. You can get this if you win the Big Blue Predictions cha uh, Challenge coming up at WrestleMania. Only available for Friendo Club setup members. Down here on the little thing, on our little scroll, we got all the new Friendo Club members, both channel members and uh, uh, patrons. So you also get your name down here in the scroll uh, each week. So, uh, so yeah, those are the new ones right there. 
So uh, that's the Friendo Club setup. Also do us a solid. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button and the little notify bell as well because sometimes yes. we go live, sometimes we upload. So I Am Mine was the, the, the radio single from Bright Act. Not a, not a clue. Not a clue. I saw the name. I was like, oh, that was a single. I don't remember what it sounds like. I, I, I would know it if I heard it, I think. Yeah, I would too. I would know Worldwide Suicide if I heard it. Yeah. Well, it's a Worldwide Suicide. That was from the, the album with the avocado on the cover, though. I think. Oh, Backspace I thought that was, the that was Riot Act? No, I don't think that was Riot Act. Oh, okay. Act. I think that was the self-titled one. The one with the avocado on it. Then. I think the avocado album was self-titled. Yeah. yeah and the one, was so. it before or after Backspace? Or that was one that was available at Target. Oh, I think that was after Avocado album. Because I did the the Cameron Crow thing with for that album. Oh, it's so bad, it's so bad. Also, hey, did you tell? Did you talk about liking this video oh, while you're watching? Hit likes. that like button. How many people are watching this right now? We got 600 people yet. Whoa. Less than 100 likes. What that math don't math. Oh my gosh, what is happening right now? Oh my god, we, we only need have at least likes. We need at least 50 percent of those watching here to hit that like button. Otherwise, ex- yeah, we're dude. not going to be happy. They expect us to get a good performance review. Bill Friendo is not going to give us a good Friendo review, a good good performance review. Bill Friendo is a harsh performance reviewer. He's oh, yeah, like, you guys harshest. are not getting your fifty percent quota for likes, so he might replace us. You know, it's entirely possible you'd have you show up to the show tomorrow. There's completely new host here. here. Yeah, exactly. Completely yeah. new host. You're like, who are these? Who are these people? We want who the old jabronis? dorks back. These guys can get fifty percent likes. <laughs> that's the key. Gonna do, yeah. That's the first. What, whatever reason for Bob Frendo, that's prime metric is getting fifty percent likes. It is. Don't know why. If we, man, he's he's promised us ninety. If we get ninety percent likes, unlimited wealth. <laughs> unlimited, yes. yes. The Ashen Chevalier here is a new Frendo Club m- uh, member for seven months now, and DJ Chicken here with a two dollar super chat reminds everybody, hey Frendo, let's get the likes up because Bill Frendo. Oh my goodness gracious. Bill and Bob Frendo, yes. Yeah, Bill and Bob Frendo. Um, anyways, uh, let's just go ahead and uh, dive into SmackDown. Let's do it. Because we, we got no collision. It's going to be a short show today. We got no collision. Well, short-ish. We'll, we'll still get an hour. It won't be the hour and a half Monday shows we normally do. No collision this week. Did it feel good? It felt pretty good, didn't it? It did feel pretty good. I did. I, I actually watched some of the college basketball, too, a little bit. Oh, that's cool. Right Just on. a little bit. A little I bit of the UNC. I watched this new show Michigan on Netflix State. called Three Body Problem. How was that? So far, it's okay. Oh, I finished the the Octopus show. Oh, what'd you think? I appreciate that, you know, so many of these shows that talk about conspiracies and such, very rarely they actually entertain entertain the idea that it could all be BS. Yeah, right, yeah. And yeah. and then there was like a hard look in the mirror they all had to make. It's like, all right, was this all BS that was fed to us? Dude, you know, the one disappointment I have is with like the main dude who yeah. is like, who then said, you know, Danny had a lot of problems. Maybe he did off himself. And I was like, bro, come on. Get out of here with that. But he had his moment of doubt right there. I do appreciate that it ended going further down the hole, you know? Yeah. Like, hey, you got to get out here. Anyways. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I liked it. The Zabruder film bit was pretty trippy, too. That was, was wild, like, I know. Oh, that's cool. I want to see that version of it. That's wild. Anyways, uh, back on SmackDown. So, Cody shows up at the arena. Also, damage control. Next up, we've got Rey Mysterio versus... Santos Escobar. Uh, and, uh, of course, this is match is badass because these guys are both badass wrestlers. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. We got a video package hyping up their history, talking about LWO. Santos, again, saying this is all about supposed to be all about family. And then Ray turned his back on Santos when he let Carlito in. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, anyways, uh, down towards the finish, Ray's looking for a 619. Santos counters with a super kick, dumps Ray on the mat face first, gets a two count there. And the Ray, or sorry, Santos just starts talking crap. Ray kicks him out of the ring, slams his head to the announce table. Then Ray takes the cover off the announce table and blasts Santos with it. Why was that not a DQ? It's been established that if you take somebody and send them into an announce table, it's fine. If you take a piece of announce table, and send that to your opponent. That should be a DQ. I lost predictions for that very reason one time when okay, uh, Rhea hey, Ripley I did that it. to Charlotte. I know it's a sketch pad, but come on. I got the rule book here. Let me take a look here. It's a sketch pad, Steve. That's been established. Looking at it right now. It's a load of BS, though. I lost predictions because something like that what happened. The, Anyways. What in the world? 
what what has happened? What like what the heck? There's, there's a doodles. Drawing of, there's like a little doodle of Enzo More. There's nothing but doodles in there. There's no rules. Certified G and a bona fide thug. So then Ray said Santos to the timekeeper area with a seat of Santana off the United Stable. That was cool. So Ray put Santos back in the ring. He's looking for a springboard, but he's tripped up by somebody in a Ray Mysterio mask. It's obviously Dominic Mysterio. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. so Ray is distracted by that. Oh, because both factions were not allowed ringside. Exactly. So the Santos hits Ray with a six one nine, falls with the Phantom Driver to get the win. Dom reveals himself. So that we're getting something with Ray and Dom at, at Mania. The exact, you know, who's all going to be involved? Don't know, but for for sure, the two of them. Dwayne here in the chat, not Dwayne Johnson, but Dwayne Tress says, "Pull up your pants." Were my chonies showing right there when I got out of the? When I oh, were they? Go. I didn't notice. I was probably I was talking about these are like the like these are the laziest like I they're Walmart sweatpants that I turned into shorts. They have the quitter elastic around the waist. Like, evidently, <laughs> evident. They seem all right when I'm walking around. But like maybe I had to bend over to do the thing, so y'all that know what be. brand of uh, you know. And also, you, you you get used to you know where your pants laid, so you may not be completely aware. Right? Yeah. Hey, look, man. Low. I was like, hey, look. I was trying to I was trying to do a gag right here with the book. I had to go grab it. I'm on camera. Wasn't a Jeffrey Tubin moment, Larson. I'm not trying no. to do a Jeffrey Tubin moment. Thankfully, thank you for that. If y'all are at work, do not Google that because man, that dude showed full hog. Not a good, not a good move, Jeffrey Tubin. No, bad move, Jeffrey Tubin. So after that, Bailey walks up to Naomi backstage. Bailey says, "Hey, I wanted to thank you for helping me out last week. It's been really hard to come by friends, and I appreciate you being there." So Naomi responds, "You don't have to thank me. You know I got you. I'm just trying to do the right thing. But my anger is towards Eo after she, uh, what she did to me last week. So she's gonna feel me tonight. All this glow." Mm-hmm, Bailey yeah. says, "Good. I didn't mean for you to get." And before she could finish, Bianca walks up and says, "Seriously." So you didn't mean it when I when it was Naomi, but you meant it every single time when I got attacked by you and damage control for the past two years. You're not sorry for what you did. You're sorry. You're just sorry that everything that you did is now catching up with you. But Bailey, let me tell you something. Everything is, that is coming your way, you deserve. Maybe this time you'll realize that your actions have consequences. And Bailey responds, "All right. You think I don't know all these things? I was there. I lived through this. I'm still living th- with it." And then her and Bianca to start arguing. Mm-hmm. And Naomi backs uh, Bianca off, and they walk off frame. Yeah, yeah. No, I love this. I think this is really good stuff. It just all makes sense. It know? makes sense. It's logical. We get to see the progression and how this is all going to play out. Uh, so after that, uh, we have. Uh, I love this bit here because Cody's backstage, and he's got, they've got like one of them. Uh, boy, have you seen the new? You're a you're a baseball dude. The new MLB. You know they had the NFL. I have, I have seen the baseball. These ones, ones yeah. are a step up, dude. Yeah. These MLB ones look fucking awesome. They look really, really good. I, I'm doing like a merch review thing on my channel. Um, Which one are you going to get? You're going you're gonna to become a baseball fan just to get one of these titles? I'll be honest with you. If they did an NBA one and they looked as good as these, I'd get a Kings one. I'd plunk Interesting. down. Interesting. You'd boy, drop the $400 on one? $500? Yeah, maybe. I'd have to think about it. But my goodness. They look beautiful. It's not like the NFL one where they just sort of like or it seem like templates, you know? It's like yeah, they just yeah, slap they... shit on there. Yeah, but man, no, these look these look really beautiful. Anyways, Cody's there. He's signing some uh, some autographs, and then Bianca and Naomi walk through. The camera follows them, um, and Bianca's uh, telling uh, Naomi not to get caught up with Bailey. She's going to end up in the same position she was in the last two years. And Naomi says, "Look, everything you're saying is valid. Your feelings are valid, and nothing I could do about the past. If I could fix it, I wouldn't. You know that. You know I got your back, but I don't back down." And I'm going to do what must be done. And we both know I can't do this by myself. They're picking us off one by one. Uh, just like you couldn't do it by yourself, Bianca. I like that. It's good stuff. That's good stuff, right? Yeah, here. these baseball tiles are they are individual. Yeah, I know. Right, exactly. It isn't a template, which is what the, the NFL ones were. Yeah, those look good. Dude, I'm telling you. Like, the Cubs uh, one looks like so vintage. Yeah. That's just the one that I sort of landed on. I don't know. I know you're an A's guy, but I don't know how long. No, I'm not an A's guy anymore. If they move into Vegas, I'm not an A's guy, Steve. Isn't that still qualified, though? Like, they might not. Uh, You never know. They might be a Cinderella, so they might get, you know, new new ownership. I'll believe it when I see it. All right. I'm preparing myself for them to. Yeah, that's how I was with the Kings and the Sonics, man. I was preparing myself. I don't don't feel like there's going to be an 11th hour save in this instance, but I hope to be wrong. I hope to be wrong. Uh, then we got Austin Theory and Grayson Waller taking on 
The Good Brothers. Good Brothers. Deviled Eggs. Dude, Carl Anderson's been to the gym. He he's wrestling NXT. like he's in the G1 again, too. At least I he wasn't this match. He, there was a sense of urgency. He was tan. He was trim. Ooh, Had did those that tope out to, the, out to the floor? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Being at the PC, apparently he's doing wonders for him, man, because, wow. Yeah, showed up. Mm -hmm. showed Still up. lost, though. Big L. Yep. At least Carl Anderson wasn't the one that eats the pin. Cause that's true. That's his history, Dobie. He was in a match to eat pins. Yeah, and they, they had to do the thing with the feet on the ropes and Austin. Uh, I'm sorry, Waller had. Waller holding on theories feet. feet on top of the ropes to get the roll yeah. up on Gallows. But it was a fun match, yeah. yeah. It was. Told the story, and everyone the Gallows, you know, bum leg. I don't know. Maybe yeah. that was real. I don't know. <laughs> guy, yeah, it looks like he's put together by uh, <laughs> some popsicle sticks, buddy. Yeah, well, I mean. It, it worked hurts out in this to see match. really tall dudes run sometimes. It, it hurts <laughs> to see really tall dudes run sometimes. Watching, I, know. I remember watching Yao Ming run yeah. when I was there in person. Oh, my God. I was like, this dude's knees are going to explode. Yeah, I know. And then injuries cost him his basketball career. So mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, after the OC take that L, we get a Braun Breaker video package talking about his athleticism. You see his 40 time, his shuttle run, his uh, vertical. They're all hyping up that he's like world-class athlete. You think that's the right way to go with them? People. Love I mean, I mean, I think it's one aspect you can do. Yeah. Because he does run the ropes just about faster than anybody else at WB. It's pretty impressive. Yeah, it is. I don't know if he's running a four three eight like they said. Because mm. here's the thing: he was a football player. I think he was a fullback, and if he was running a four three eight and had all those measurables, mm -hmm. like why didn't he get drafted or yeah, play in the yeah. NFL? You yeah, know, right, yeah. Because four three eight is fast. Football IQ wasn't there, dude. Could be. <laughs> when be. is that when um, is the it, it, podcast drop is it already out the first one is yeah oh is it i gotta listen yeah to that's that. where all those clips were from i believe man i saw somebody who was interviewing him in the locker room they're like why are you doing this podcast and it was such a great answer i freaking love lebron james oh yeah, like, yeah 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 he's like you know man there's all these asinine debates over if you took a player from the 50s and put him in today's game, how would he do? <laughs> he was like, the youth of today don't need to hear that stuff. They need to hear us talk serious about basketball. I'm like, oh, gosh. I freaking yes. love LeBron James, dude. Yes. Anyways. Anyways, uh, but if yeah. Bron's whole character can't be world-class athlete. No, it can't. It needs no. to be something more. It also can't be like what we used to see in NXT, how he was like, dude, who goes out fishing. Remember him yeah. and Apollo Crews, their entire feud was just like, hey, hey we're gonna go you're fishing. a cool guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. More about how Braun has a dog in him. That's what we need. <laughs> That's, yeah, I think like some animal is what you're saying, you know? Like, I've been in the lab. I've been trying to fuse Braun Breaker with dog. It's more than metaphor to me. I want to be physical. It's like, well, how, then, how, how much luck have you had, Braun? And, the, and then you see him out there on somebody's lawn popping his... Lifting his leg up going pee. <laughs> <laughs> and then you know neighbor johnny gargano comes out hey where's your owner to pick that up you know the funniest thing is when at least when my dog poops and yeah. she has her back to me yeah. and then she looks over her shoulder to look at me while she's pooping it's like i'm it's like and she's like why are you looking at me while i'm pooping human? no dude no they rely on us to have their back she i know but it looks, i looked it up the pack needs to protect you know when you're taking when you're dropping a dookie Oh, I understand that, but at the same yeah. time, when she looks at me, she she looks at me as if she doesn't want me to be there. Oh, it is funny. It is funny, but that's like, hey, you know, you you making sure no predators are coming up here. Oh yeah, that's why yeah. they circle. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. So after the Braun video package, oh, dude, I I told Dope this early today. You're gonna hate this. This one over here. Look, wait, there she is. Yeah. Drop some lint because it's spring break. Yeah. So we, I actually, for the first time in like ages, I let her off the leash because she's uh -huh. so slow now because she's old. Yeah. Drop some landmines out there at the middle school field. <laughs> oh, man. They're going to be, but it's a week. It, it has a week to absorb or to the stiffen up. There might be people they are like, oh, school's out. Let's go to the middle, the middle school field and throw the football around or something. Yeah, right. Yeah. Play tackle football. Guess what? Landmine. Face first. Face yeah. first. Right oh, in the landmine. Face first. Oh, somebody's gonna have a bad day, huh? That's what I'm talking about, and that's on you, Steve. I hope you you're comfortable with that. <laughs> Don't blame me. She's the one dropping these landmines. It's your responsibility to pick it up. What? Where does it say that? Where does it say that? Unwritten rules. 
Maybe yeah, I'll, I'll write it in there for sure. So then we got a, a, a Roman was on the Pat McAfee show, so we got a recap. He was talking crap about, but he talked crap about CM Punk, talked crap mm-hmm. about Cody. That's kind of all it was him talking shit. Yeah, man. Uh, then we got Naomi versus EO Sky. This was a fun match. Naomi's gear was amazing. Oh, my God. It was God. so good. Probably the best visually branded wrestler in WWE right now. Like what she did, the stuff that she did. I, I'm just staring at her hair, like, oh my gosh, what is happening right now? It looks, I mean, she looks like she's from the year her and Jade. That you know, the, the shot of Jade look watching the TV or next to the. T- she looks like she's from the you know Blade Runner. I know, like you know, I know that's Blade Runner was actually set in 2019. So I'm thinking yeah. like you know, 3019. The sequel which is 2049. 2049, right? Exactly. It was only which you know 20 years from now that's going to be here and it's going to look nothing like that at all. No. Flying no. cars, get out of here with that. I did see a thing today where someone's making like essentially a, 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 a drone, but you can actually drive it. You could ride it. But it's got the propellers on the bottom like a drone does, but it only has, a, you can only go like 20, I think you only fly it for 20 minutes. Wasn't that the physics of the Blade Runner stuff? I think it was like giant so. fans. But this is a real thing. Yeah, no, that's awesome. I would never step in one of those. No. That no. would be horrible. I would be so scared. I know. Be Me on too. The ground. Safe and sound. Nelda here exactly. with a super chat. Says, this is my first stream with the Friendo Club setup. Thank you, Nelda. Appreciate it. Oh, thank you. And welcome. DJ Chicken here with a super chat for a dollar. Thank you very much. We appreciate thank you, DJ that Chicken. as well. So this Naomi EO match was a lot of fun. Um, of course, Damage Control eventually comes to ringside to get involved. Distracts Naomi while she's going up top for the split leg moonsault. EO gets that out of the way. Hits the moonsault to get the win. So all the Damage Control get in the ring and they circle Naomi. Brawl breaks out. Asuka hits Naomi with the mist. Damage control right back on the attack. Bianca runs down to make the save. She starts taking out each member of damage control. Hits Kyrie with the glam slam, looking for a KOD on her. Bianca hits, sorry, Dakota hits Bianca with the chop block. And then damage control lays out Bianca and Naomi while the crowd's chanting for Bailey. But Bailey was laid out by Io before she made her entrance. For this match. Her music mm-hmm. hits. The rest of damage control is on the ramp. You cut backstage and Eos is laying out Bailey. Yeah, man. Yeah. Ouch. Yeah. So no Bailey. But eventually we have that moment where Bailey and Bianca and Naomi are all in the ring together. Crowd's gonna pop huge for that. Big time. Big time. Big time. Yeah, it's gonna be a good one. Uh after that, Cody is chatting with Nick Aldis backstage. Paul Heyman lurks in the background to suss out if Cody's actually there by himself. Looks like he is. Uh, then we had a Jade Cargill video package. Made her look like a million bucks. Oh, yeah. Uh, she uh, declares she's taking her talents to the blue brand to SmackDown as she makes her official debut as SmackDown talent next week. So I don't know <laughs> if that means it's going to be in ring or if it's going to be promo. Know, just I'm going to drop a promo. I don't know. Don't know. Don't know. After that, uh, we're backstage. Bianca's pouring water in Naomi's eyes, trying to get the mist out. And then Tiffany walks up and goes, oh, you know, this is actually a pretty good look for you, Naomi. Toodles. She walks off, and Bianca's just angry with her. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, after that, we have Kevin Owens backstage talking to Nick Aldis. Pretty deadly step in. Claim there's a conspiracy against them because they're not at Mania. And Kale's like, hey, we were talking here. Pretty Deadly says, yeah, we're talking about the people who don't have a, a, a Mania match, a tag match. And Kevin Owens like, oh, I know about tag titles. I won them last year at Mania. And he said, challenges them to a tag match next week on SmackDown. And they're like, well, you ain't got no friends. You don't have a partner. He's like, I do have a, I do have a partner. I got somebody who can help me out. And he's like, will you, will you be my tag partner next week? And then it's just Orton. He's there yeah. and uh, really freaks out uh, the blonde one. He goes, oh, Elton Prince. That guy. And then, uh, and then, he, and then Orton's like, oh, yeah. And he sort of talks up Elton a little bit, and then uh, but he's like, "But yeah, I'll be your tag partner." And they're like, "Oh, damn it!" So then him and Randy leave, and, and pretty big because uh, Kevin had talked about last time I was in this building, I punched out two guys with the same shot with one punch. Yeah. And so they stand next to each other talking. All this is like, you guys might not want to stand in a line like that. And they're like, "Why not?" Sure enough, well, pa. Kevin Owens comes in with the big right hand. And nails them both in one punch. It was a funny yeah. bit. Not as funny as this next bit, though. No. <laughs> so it, the commentary talks about how they send a camera crew to AJ's home to get, you know, like his, some footage of the build to his match against LA Knight. So it looks like AJ's in his home gym. 
Judy uh, so jacked. He's massive. Yeah. Massive. Uh, and he's about to answer a question. You hear a, a horn blaring outside. Honk, honk. Yeah. He walks out. Of course, it's L.A. night. Yeah. Yeah. So he starts talking crap. AJ goes over there. Brawl. Then they cut to dash cam as the cops pull up mm-hmm. to AJ's house. So they break up the fight. And they got they got L.A. Knight. They arrested him. You got AJ's wife out there holding him back. And it's just L.A. Knight talking crap the whole time. Yeah, yeah. I was really hoping that the cops would see fit to arrest AJ as well. Like he would start getting into it. It was close. He, it she was. I thought they were going to do that. Yeah. No, that was, that was good stuff, man. It looks like they're having fun with it. Yes. Uh, speaking of fun, the Street Profits versus AOP match was pretty fun. Um, yeah, I, I thought that was this was decent. I was going to say something about the 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 ring attire looked great because I always I always look at the the ring attire. You yeah, know? it looked great on Montez. That dude can't wear anything that doesn't look amazing on him. Sometimes it doesn't quite work for the other dude though, for Dawkins. <laughs> like. Like, man, because he's look, he's in good shape. Don't get me yeah. wrong. He's in good yeah. shape. Terrific athlete. Really, you know, it's good stuff. But I'm like, man, that just does not doesn't work. Doesn't work. Yeah, I know. There's not an easy answer for it either. You know what I no, mean? Because like it was really well designed gear. The color scheme was great. Yeah, it yeah. was purple and gold and white. It looked yeah. great. Right. I just don't know what it is. Doing the whole like pants, like trunks, singlet thing. It kind of only works with a variety of color schemes. Maybe it's just the singlet. Maybe that's what it is. That could be. Maybe Dude. if you ditched the singlet, it, it would have it worked. Let's see the beef. Let's see the beef. You know, he had like the old school Batman gloves on too. He did. The purple gloves. That's yeah. what Batman wore in his first appearance. Purple yeah. gloves. Yeah, that's right. Very silly. That's right. That's right. So uh, Street Profit get the win here. Um, at one point, AOP hits Ford with the final chapter. Dawkins rushes in to break up the pin, so AOP is looking for the powerbomb neckbreaker combo on Ford. Dawkins breaks it up with a pounce, and then Ford rolls up Akam to get the win. They advance. They are going to face Waller and Theory for a spot in the ladder match. If they do a title split, you got to think the Profits are probably uh, most likely to grab those blue titles. Oh, man, I don't know. Well, I don't know. You think they're going to get past Waller in theory? Oh, yeah. You think so? What, the only reason Waller they might not get the titles. WrestleMania, then? I don't know. A whole lot of nothing, really? You, you don't, I, I don't see any universe where you have a ladder match and don't have Montez Ford involved in it. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good now, point. Now, I guess the possibility exists that AOP can make an appearance during ladder matching and make sure the Street Profits don't win. But You know what they'll probably do? Grayson Waller effect at WrestleMania with the probably. Legends. Yeah, and then be. Austin Theory ends up eating a stunner, a, stunner. a tombstone, maybe a tombstone, a uh, choke slam, choke slam, a choke slam. Yeah, and then who's the other legend that's supposed to be there? Oh, Cena and AA. Oh, Theory and Cena. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's, that's what it. they're gonna do. That's okay. It. You got it. You got it. There it is. Uh, so after that, Heyman's on the phone backstage. He tells Roman, "Oh, Cody's here all by himself. My tribal chief, your public awaits." There's no way he's got people hiding here in the arena. Uh, after that, Roman does arrive at the arena. Heyman joins him and joins him, and they walk through the arena. Who would you like to be, Roman Reigns or Cody Rhodes, for this next segment? Because we got time. We can we go through the whole thing. Oh my God, this is so long. <laughs> it is really long. I'll be Roman. I'll be Roman. You're gonna be Roman, okay? I'll be Roman. We can. Get I love. This. I love. I love doing the Roman impression. It's so much fun. But I'll be Cody. That's oh. that's that's that's. There you go. So Roman just, comes. I'll throw up my one right here, man. This is my one right here. So uh, Roman <laughs> I comes get to the, be the girl in the audience, though. There you go. So Roman comes to the ring first, and the crowd's chanting for the Rock. And of course, Roman does that. <sighs> he gets the mic. Heyman hands it to him, and Roman says, "The wise man made a promise. The tribal chief kept his word. That's what I am—a man of my word. And I'm here alone, no bloodline other than the wise man. But he's no physical threat." So I say we bring Cody out here and join us, Milwaukee, because it's time to acknowledge me. There's only one royal. F- there's more than there's another. Well, first we fan. see Cody walking in a, a, through the backstage yeah, on Tron. That's right. Go to commercial, come back, and then we get. Yeah, there's another royal family out there. And uh, so Cody comes out. Go ahead, Roman. Well, I kept. Oh, sorry. Well, I hear you are. I kept my word. I'm here by myself. How about you, huh? 
Well, I'm a man. I'm as much a man of my word as you are. So if you came alone, I came alone. <laughs> but here's, the odds are contagious, you know. <laughs> as a sleepiness, maybe. So Roman follows. He says to, to Haman, you said he would. You believed it too. You're a fool. You're stupid to me. Hear me out. From my perspective, you're not fit to do this job. You're not fit to be the face of this company because you're an idiot. You're out here thinking with your heart, thinking everyone's got the best out for you. Nobody cares. You better start thinking with your head. Look at what I, you've done the past month or so. You've aligned yourself with my little brother, Seth Rollins. And there's all kinds of problems with that. Let me ask you, what happened on Monday? Were you a little bit of a jam? Where was he at, huh? Where was Seth at? Was he in traffic? Was it a plane delay? Was it snowing? What happened? Because it seemed like he was showing his true colors. Then what did he say? Uh, that he was going to be your shield? You understand? I was in the shield with him, right? <laughs> we didn't do good guy things, but we had a bond. And over time, I thought we'd become a family. They became a brother. He was becoming a brother. And, and then what happened? He stabbed me in the back. What do you think is going to happen to you? That's why I think you're a fool, plain and simple. So Cody busts out a reference from like 2013. Says, did you ask me if I remember the shield? Because I certainly think we all remember the shield. You guys were unstoppable, undefeated. Let me ask you something. Do you remember the first team to beat the shield? I'll give you a hint. The last name was Rhodes. And Roman was like, wait, that happened? Oh, shit, that did kind of happen, didn't it? <laughs> he says, I appreciate this education, this venom-laced wisdom that you're dropping on me. I don't know if I wore them. Yeah, I did. I got my bullet cufflinks on tonight, so I'm certainly not unfamiliar with factions, betrayal, all that stuff, while I was off doing something. But this isn't a faction. What the hell was that? I was off uh, doing something. Because <laughs> he was bullet club, a blah, 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 blah. No, I get, but there's got to be, I don't know, there's some interesting know, it elliptical a, way you could reference it. I agree, I agree. He says, uh, it's almost as if he's like self-conscious about it. He's like, I don't want to mention the old shit, you know? know and I, I know. kind of appreciate that. I like that they're not leaning on, them, leaning on that at all. He says, the bloodline's not a faction. It's family above all. He reads the new shirt. He says, so can I trust Seth freaking Rollins? I didn't even think to do that. Let me ask them. You guys think I could, I could trust Seth freaking Rollins? Crowd's like, yeah, of course you can. He's great. Cody says, Seth Rollins, he might hate my guts. You might be right, but I know one thing. He hates you even more, and I'll see your situation. I'll raise you another. Can I trust Seth Rollins? Roman, can you trust your partner at Mania? Can you trust The Rock? I think we're all slightly confused. And the pantheon that is the bloodline, who is really in charge? Is it the tribal chief, or is it the final boss? That's old. <laughs> <laughs> didn't you just say that to him just the other way around that's what i'm talking about here spoken and spun like a true politician i mean what are you doing out here you running for governor hey anybody got a kid that cody could pull out here and make him part of his entrance because he loves you that's all you do you promise this you promise that but you don't ever deliver you never keep these promises you told these people all these lies and nothing ever comes to fruition you want to know why because you're number two and the crowd's booing goes oh i mean that with respect you all would be lucky to be a number two, but you're not <laughs> number two, but you're not even close. This is the greatest number two of all time, but that's all you'll ever be because I'm number one forever. Put those ones up, Steve. Put your ones up. So the crowd starts chanting for Cody. He looks a little uh, affected by it. He says, let's get real here. You grew up in this industry, same as I did. You were probably looking in the mirror, wanting to be the face of a generation and the biggest superstar to come along. We're talking Bruno, Hogan, Flair, Rock, Austin, Cena. I have conceded to the idea that the generation that follows us, our kids will grow up wanting to be the next Roman Reigns. That is your destiny, but I feel that like you're unfamiliar with mine. I'm the greatest number two, the greatest number two. Well, and when it comes to mania, when it comes to who defeats you for this championship that you've held for all this time, I'm not number two. I'm the one. Uh, and he says, good luck at Maney, and offers his hand. And then Roman's like, mm, mm, mm. And then, yeah. You want me to shake that? He goes over and shakes Heyman's hand. Yeah, yeah. They go walk to the foot of the ramp, and Roman snaps his fingers. 
and his music plays. And I'm like, wow, that's a cool trick. But then Solo and Jimmy make their way through the crowd ringside and stand next to Roman. So then they cut and Jay's standing there, teleporting. Wah, wah. Cut and Roman, or sorry, Seth is there too, yeah. teleported. Yeah, wow. They come through the crowd and they stand kind of uh, uh, ringside in front of Cody, who's still in the ring, but, you know, between Cody and the rest of the bloodline. Yeah, and then meanwhile, you know, fan there, uh, this uh, this lady uh, right there on the, the, uh, the ramp front row says, you need all these people to acknowledge it's all these strangers to acknowledge you what a bitch that's fucking cute roman <laughs> <laughs> so they're gonna make this a triple threat i guess oh so. my goodness you know who's on our youtube chat right now larson Ooh. wayne maker oh hi wayne where's this guy been where's he been he's What's still the got the thing? he's still got the wrench he's still a, a mod here he's still a mod here yeah what's the best thing wayne maker ever did larson Oh, it's Matt Chat Questions in his van. <laughs> it's Matt Chat Questions in his van. Because it, it had the same kind of lighting and the same ambiance as like the Phil Collins music video. It did. And, you know, I will say this about Wayne, especially back then. The guy had some gravitas. He Hello, did. Steve. Hello, Lawson. And then, and then when I visit London, he shows up to my flat, to my Airbnb flat, in like little tiny pink shorts. Uh -huh. All the mystique gone. All the gravitas gone. Yeah, yeah. And then he asked me for for my autograph. That was weird. <laughs> Remember that time he locked himself out of his apartment? I did, I did. <laughs> no, 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 I'm sorry. He didn't do that. He. <laughs> oh, God, Wayne. I love you so much. Ugh. You have no idea. I Hope wish you're I could go well, back Wayne. to England just to visit him, man. He's oh, great. Oh, I know, yeah. Wayne's Hopefully great. you're going to be with us for WrestleMania, Wayne. Jeez, at least hang out with us for like a proper watch along. I know. My goodness. All right, let's run through this Raw preview and answer a few questions. Uh, let's run through it, man. Let's run through it. CM Punk returns to Raw in his hometown of Chicago. Oh, wow. Look at this. Diddy's Miami and Los Angeles homes were raided by Homeland Security this afternoon. Holy crap. Going to have some problems. Uh, anyways, what's happening? CM Punk's back? That's cool. Yeah. Uh, Jay Uso combats. Shinsuke Nakamura. Easy win for main event, Jey Uso. You got that right. Sami Zayn battles Big Bronson Reed. Super easy win for Sami Zayn. Ivy Nile takes on the new look, Candice LeRae. Is she going to have like a new branding? Maybe. That's cool. Ricochet looks to get payback on JD McDonough. Oh, he'll, yeah, he'll probably get that. And then it was advertised Andrade versus Ivar, but apparently, according to uh, Twitter, it's not happening. Okay. All according right. to WrestleVotes, I believe, said it's not matching. But Andrade will still be in action, not just just not against Ivar. How you know? Well, that's what WrestleVotes said. Ay, get uh, All right, we got some questions here from the question threads from the Friendo Club setup. Or if you guys want to drop us a super chat there in the, in the YouTube, you can do that as well, and we'll read your question too. We'll pretty much do anything for money, Larson. Well, not anything. No. Uh, Michael Scalmanini says, uh, do you see Braun Breaker and Jade Cargill having a match in WrestleMania? I not like against they... each other, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, outcome unlikely. I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, do you uh, think they might do Andre the Giant uh, battle? Yeah, Rose? on the SmackDown before WrestleMania. SmackDown yeah. WrestleMania, I think you're right. Yeah, and Braun. I, yeah, I, I think Braun's got a pretty good chance of winning that one. Luisa Reza here with the super chat says, "Already liked the video at the beginning, and I liked it again to get those numbers up." Oh, a double like? That's not going to work. That's an, that's you liked it, and you don't like it. it. Doesn't work that way. Yeah, Luis. I think you, you have to like it an odd number of times. Yeah, so can you like it again a third time and stop there? Unless you do it again, then you got to do it a fifth time. It's got to be an odd number. It's got to be an odd number, Luis. Thank you for the super chat. Thank you. Thank you for the like. Thank you for the like. Yeah. Uh, JR Jr. Likes. here says, you guys have finally landed a job at WB Pharaoh slash shithead's dog walker. Okay, yeah. Where in the arena would you not pick up his poop and where would you have to pick it up? Any place people are walking, I'd pick it up. Anywhere else is fair game. Not, not picking up those landmines. Yeah, if I if clearly people are gonna be walking there, <laughs> then you know I'm not gonna do that. That's rude. But if they're not walking there, if logic dictate dictates that nobody's walking there, I'm just gonna keep that landmine. I don't it's think at. there's a whole lot of places within the arena that there's not not a chance people might walk. 
Like the boiler room? Nobody's walking down there. I mean, at some point, someone's got to go down there and do repairs or something. And it's probably warm and moist, so it's not going to dry up. Oh, nasty. I'll so, that up. This is disgusting. I don't know if there's a place that you could... You're walking around with a bag of dog shit? That's terrible. Especially shit. Well, there's garbage, shit. Every, garbage everywhere. Garbage cans everywhere, you'd think. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know about that. Joe the Meme Maker says that Mania 31 and 32 Stardust got his own custom ladders. What would be the updated version for Cody? It'd just be ladders with the American flag on Yeah, it'd just be red, white, and blue. Yeah. Uh, Frozen Tape here says, we already know that Roman versus Cody is going to be overbooked to the moon. However, what booking decision would kill the match for you? If it's not overbooked. Yeah, honestly, if they do the thing, because Triple H sometimes does a thing where, like, People come out mid match to try to overbook it, but then they'll be run off by somebody else and it's just back to one on one. Yeah. I mean, I guess at that point, if Cody has to prove, hey, I can beat this guy fair and square, then I guess that'd be a choice. I guess I wouldn't be suited. But no, I want I want mankind winning the title. I want that level of overbooking. I want everybody out there. Yeah. That'd be amazing. And then everybody comes out and they hoist Cody up. Cody wins by count out and they hoist him up. There you go. His, they did the Lux Luger thing for him. Yeah, Primetime Rambo says, uh, to you, what thrown together tag team, uh, what thrown together tag team could have had a longer run? He says to me, X Pac and Kane could have won another year before they broke up. Um well, imagine if Shawn Michaels and Steve Austin stayed a tag team. Dude, that was the one that I was gonna yeah. Did Sid and Goldberg ever win the titles together? Not that I recall. I know Goldberg Fuck and Goldberg, Brett did. Anyways. Yeah, that's right. They did. Yeah. They were tag champs. Nah, screw Goldberg. Yeah. Uh, Disc Golfing Goon says, in general, when you guys find yourselves in a funk or you're feeling defeated or just need to re regain motivation or focus, what helps you guys push through, reach the other side? So I have one of two methods. Number one, I either go out and I shoot some hoops. That always helps. Number two, sometimes, honestly, you just got to take the L and restart the next day. You know, it's like, hey, things aren't going right for me right now. Not feeling it. Not feeling motivated. Just turn on Pluto TV. There's a channel called More Star Trek, and it usually plays nothing but Deep Space Nine. Turn more that shit Star on. Trek. Yeah, More Star Trek. They don't do it. Of course, they don't do it on just the Star Trek channel. They do it on the More Star Trek channel. Star Trek channels reserved for original series and next generation, uh -huh. which is kind of bullshit. More Star Trek might as well be called Best Star Trek because that's where Deep Space Nine is. What else do they have on there, though? It's they have Deep Space Nine and then Enterprise, so it kind of balances each other out. Oh, my God. I would never turn that channel on then. All right. Um, yeah, no. Like, right now, it's just they just do, like, massive, like, 48-hour to one-week-long blocks. And then it's like, it's, like, 20 episodes of a season, and then they go back to the first. You know, they, they don't have, yeah. like, it's not, like, continuous. They only have, like, chunks of seasons. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, for me, it's try to do something physical that will allow me to take my mind off whatever's going on, whether that be shooting hoops. Back when I played baseball, I was going to the batting cage. Now, if one of the reasons I like lifting weights so much is that it's time for it's an opportunity for me to push aside whatever else is going on and just go out there and concentrate on that. So, so anything that, that, that requires a great deal of focus, I, it works for me to kind of try to push through. Yeah. Um, AJ Otani says, what's your favorite and least favorite WrestleMania Re rematch rematch oh, favorite and least favorite rematch favorite is probably end of an era. That was a rematch of uh, yeah, Triple rematch. H and Undertaker. Yeah. Least favorite. Hmm. Probably oh, probably one of the Cena two. I was going to say one of the many, uh, Roman Brock matches. Oh God. Yeah. Never mind. You're right. Yep. It's going to be like probably uh, with a 34, 34 was. Yeah, I think that was that was horrible. Yeah, that was bad. Uh, Alex Foster asked, where do you guys want Motor City machine guns to go? Apparently, they're going to be free agents soon. So you want to talk about how it's weird that as soon as TNA rebranded, they basically died. Like, bro, what was the latest on Killer Kelly? Because I know it was reported that she was oh, taking there. time off. She's, still she's just taking time off. Okay. Yeah. But I did read that thing where apparently when these contracts are expiring, they're not offering new contracts. They're offering appearance deals. That's crazy. How? It's kind of insulting, honestly. You know, 
you got somebody like Motor City Machine Guns who've been a foundational piece for Impact TNA for a vast majority of their existence. And I'm not saying, I haven't heard anything about them specifically getting the per appearance deal, but for example, if, you know, they had their contracts and it was a deep, you know, they're paying not huge money, but decent money. And then they were like, all right, well, let's try to renegotiate or negotiate a new deal. And they're like, we'll give you $500 each for taping. So I'll, I'll put it, I'll put it this way because like, in theory, I agree with you, but we don't know what their finances are like. We have no idea if. Oh, I understand all that. You know what I mean? Like, I have no idea what the profit profit uh, what the uh, profit loss is for TNA. Oh, they're probably hemorrhaging money and have been for years. I know what WWE's is. They're making money like it's public, hand over fist. Hand over fist, obviously. If you're Anthem or whatever owns TNA, yeah, it's Anthem. It's Anthem, yeah. And you're like, man, you know, Scott Demore, you you tried. <laughs> You tried, you spent a lot of our money, but like the return just isn't there. And, and it's like, at some point we have to start like, you know, making decent money off this. Here's the thing though. If they don't have any top flight talent, no one's got, but few audience members they have watching the show is going to go down. Your odds of making money drastically go down. If you don't have the talent, people are already attached to that work for that company. Well, that's the lesson they're going to learn, I guess. Yeah, know? I guess so. If they, if they think, look, if they think that, because they have Josh Alexander for a year. Yep. He's not going anywhere. They have Moose for a few more years. Yeah, probably, huh? Yeah. yeah. If they're happy with like what they got in the near future and the rest of them are just going to be appearance deals, maybe they're just No, I, I understand okay. it. For, if they're hemorrhaging money and they are trying to, you know, keep to a budget, I get it. Yeah. The downside is, of course, you would lose all this talent. You risk alienating the fan base you have, which isn't large to begin with. Yeah, dude, I know. I know. I don't disagree. I'm just saying. And if you're going to open up the checkbook for anybody, Mm -hmm. you open up the checkbook for the people who are foundational pieces of what you are. Yeah, but they've been there. Like, how much more stuff? can they do man i don't know i don't look i don't necessarily disagree with you i i I think loyalty is a thing but but do you open up the checkbook for dudes who have been there done that for like a long time and there's really not a whole lot for them to do or other people with other names i don't know i don't know i'm not i'm not automatically i just think it's interesting that i'll put it this way i think it's simply sad it is sad it is sad. I think it's sad that, you know, they, they did the rebrand. They got rid of Scott Demore, who everybody loved. Um, but it seems like a business reality, the, the way they're going to, you know? So it's just sad. Uh, Andre Zimple here says, after seeing Steve rank the Rock's WrestleMania matches, how would Larson Power rank his top five Mania matches? Top five. Top five Mania matches. We know what number one is, right? It's end of an era. No, no, Rock's WrestleMania matches. Oh, oh, Rock. Last I checked, The Rock wasn't in that match. Because I was was on uh, uh, Greg Morgan's show uh, this weekend on Friday uh, ranking the the Rock's matches, yeah. Uh, Number one, Rock versus Eric Rowan. Okay, wow, interesting. Hot take right there, hot take. Super short, didn't overstay its welcome. You know, shockingly, for the match itself, six seconds long, you're right. But like the entire segment was like 30 minutes. I was going to say everything that preceded the match really overstayed its welcome. Yeah. So, uh, but, but you know, how many times do you get to see a wrestler out there with a flamethrower light his name on fire? It's kind of awesome. Like Doesn't I really, very often. I downplayed the coolness of it at the time, you know, but again, at the time I didn't appreciate it. Maybe off was the direction in which I should have fucked. There you go. Yeah. Don't call him Steve. Call him shithead. Call me shithead. Call him shithead. Uh, Please two. Don't. That's kind of rude. I'll be honest. <laughs> two. Um, I'll say uh, The Rock versus Ken Shamrock at WrestleMania 14. Who doesn't love a match that has a finish and the finish is overturned? You know, because Ken, it really gonna... established Ken Shamrock as the world's most dangerous <laughs> man. You're not going to take this seriously. You know, this is like a serious podcast we're doing here. What's the, the, hey, you. your Somebody definition of serious you. is different than mine. Somebody asked you. <laughs> A serious question. Uh, three, when The okay. Rock was host of WrestleMania 27. Okay, 
Come it cost on. John Cena his match. He not got involved, even, therefore it's a rock match. Not even a rock match, man. Uh, number four, okay. I'll say WrestleMania 17. Really good match, elevated by a shocking finish. Ele oh, elevated <laughs> by that awful finish. God damn you. And then number five. Yeah, look, at this is horrible. I'll say uh, WrestleMania 16 for the top superstars WWE re at the ring at the same time. We should Come have been on. like number 16 is like whenever they recreated what weird shit they did in Young Rock. Yeah. <laughs> with those, boy, you know, man, I remember seeing clips from that show like, oh, look at this. They got this guy to play The Undertaker. <laughs> I'm like, who the fuck is this to I know. They didn't even try. No, they some of them didn't even try. Wait, what was your number five? Sorry. WrestleMania 2000. For oh, the top superstars yeah. in the in the business in the ring at one time in the main event of WrestleMania, come on! And I was there for that. You're talking about the McMahon's, aren't you? You're talking yeah. about the McMahon's. No, not at all. No, absolutely not. <laughs> no, You're trying like, to get me yeah, there. A I, McMahon I, I was, in every corner. No, on, that was the it. bad idea. If it was yeah, just Rock versus it, Mankind <laughs> versus Triple H versus Will, come well. on. In an elimination match, there's drama there. Come on. No. It was all, those are all bad picks, dude. Those I know. It's intentionally bad. I was trying to be funny. Yeah, you were pretty funny. That was a good one. That was a good one. John and Alistair voice. John. John. Come on, man. He says, sorry to ask a, qu a casting question. No, I'm not doing a casting question. Sorry, John. I'll read your name, and I'll, I appreciate it, but I'm not going to do it. I'm, I'm drawing the line this far, no further. You're not going to get me to do it. What, just for sake of curiosity, what, did he, what do you want us to cast? Which wrestling personalities would you cast for a Bad Boys Pistons show? Oh. Yeah, I'm not doing it. Here, how about this? Dennis Rodman for Dennis Rodman. He's there we go. Done. Done. Jesse Helsius says, um, yesterday was my dad's 69th birthday. Nice. He shares it with The Undertaker. Do either of you share a birthday with the wrestler? Also, what's the last four digits of your social security number? <laughs> Address la uh, your social security number. What's your mother's maiden name, Larson? Yes. <laughs> I ain't answering the, that question, Jesse. What was the model of your first car? <laughs> Why is <Jesse> <laughs> what's your first pet's name? Jesse's trying to identity theft us. <laughs> Gonna have replacements tomorrow. <laughs> Oh, Jay Smooth says, I feel like WWE are missing the opportunity mentioning Finn training Becky in their friendship since he's in Judgment Day with Rhea. Key story beat. Do you guys think that would make sense to add that layer to the feud? That's eh, just too much. It's like Excalibur just explaining shit, you know? Yeah. I don't yeah. need to see all that. Yeah. The, like a small reference. Yeah, maybe, but. Mm. Not, you don't need, don't need the Wikipedia entry, right? Oh, wow. Look at this. Wayne Maker what? says. Chaps, I got a chip off. The new missus is ringing me. I'll see you in a bit. His imaginary new girlfriend's ringing him, dude. He's going to lock her out of the apartment like he did the last one. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll fell asleep on the couch. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Wayne! Wayne! Let me in! <laughs> oh, Wayne, I love you so much. Oh, my God. Oh, shit. Look who's here in the YouTube chat. Look who figured out how to use uh, YouTube chat. Trip oh, my Rogers. goodness. Is it Trip Rogers? He says, just know I'll not be hitting that like button, especially after you accuse me of stealing a water bottle at Action Coast. Give my water bottle back. Trip? He did. He stole my water bottle. Actually, I'm going to speak for Steve on this one. Trip, you can keep the water bottle if you hit the like button. I don't want it now. I don't want it now. That dude, mm lips all over it so there you go if you, water bottle is yours just hit the like button please trip just hit the like button please thank you come on man <laughs> my goodness gracious oh boy oh boy wayne made my day he made my day he said the the new misses the new misses look at him <laughs> telling us all oh, oh my boy, goodness i've got some new a uh, new misses <laughs> 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 oh my look at goodness. that dude loving the single life loving it or i guess not so single anymore uh elemental giant says what other wrestlers should add the stink face to their arsenal hmm
What was that dude? Uh, the other dude that's uh, Mark Davis. Yeah. He's got he's got a he's got he's got a dump truck there, man. Yeah, yeah. That dude, true. He's got a he's got a keister on him. Yeah, he does. I'm say, Mark there Davis. you go. How about how about L.A. Knight? He likes to mention keisters. <laughs> he does love to mention keisters. Can give himself the old wedgie. Yeah. yeah. Who wants to smell my asshole? Yeah. I know. <laughs> Look at these cheeks. Yeah. <laughs> Look at these cheeks. Yeah. You know he'd have the cheeks that are like super white too, because like. Oh, I know. Gonna... I know. <laughs> He doesn't wear the thong in the tanning bed, you know? <laughs> I mean, where's his tiny whiteies in the tanning bed? <laughs> oh, man. You guys are too much. Anyways, <laughs> why does Mr. Dope say Maven? <laughs> <laughs> why Maven, Mr. Dope? Oh, man. That's too much. <sighs> what a fun episode. Anyways, that's going to do it for the day. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We appreciate it. They're wrapping us up, Larson. There's no wrapping up. They're it's wrapping just you in there. Up. Hill Who's wrapping there? you up? He's like, wrap it up, B. You're pointing to the corner. There's like shelving over right there, there. And you're fan. There's not I a see person. Hilton's dumb face right there. And he's wrapping oh, up. Oh, there's no Larson. dumb face Hilton over there. There's nobody there. 